This video is an introduction to distributed arrays in the Parallel Computing Toolbox. You will get an overview of what distributed arrays are, how to construct or create them, and we will walk through a simple example of how you can use distributed arrays to deal with big data. Typically, when dealing with data-intensive challenges that require you to process large amounts of data, you're often limited by the amount of memory available on a single machine or the time it takes to process large amounts of data at a time. MATLAB includes a number of tools for accessing and processing large data sets. These include data stores, the MapReduce programming framework, tall arrays, and of course, distributed arrays, which is part of the Paddle Computing Toolbox and a focus for this video. Paddle Computing Toolbox and MATLAB Distributed Computing Server help you overcome the memory limitations of your single machine using distributed memory. Essentially, this allows you to combine the memory of multiple machines on your cluster and use it as though it were your own. Distributed arrays is the feature that makes this possible. It supports partitioning large matrices and multi-dimensional arrays across the combined memory of multiple machines in your computer cluster. You can think of a distributed array as one variable whose contents are split across multiple MATLAB workers or MATLAB sessions on the cluster, but treated as a single entity on your MATLAB desktop. All the underlying communication required between the data available remotely on the cluster machines is taken care of automatically. With distributed arrays, you can run big data applications that require simultaneous access to all elements of matrices that are too large to fit in memory of a single machine. So how would you create these distributed arrays? There are broadly two ways to do that. One is to load the distributed array from a data store and partition the data among your MATLAB workers. A data store is essentially a repository for collections of files or data that are too large to fit in memory. If the data store contains tabular data, then distributed of the data store returns a distributed table containing the data, as you can see here. You can also directly create distributed arrays by using matrix creation functions like zeros, ones, and so on. You can do this by simply appending distributed after the usual arguments for the function, as you can see here. Once created, the data is loaded into the memory of the cluster and remains in memory for all subsequent operations. So what do you do after you create or load these distributed arrays? Over 400 existing MATLAB functions are enhanced or overloaded to work with distributed arrays. The enhanced functions include functions for math, matrix manipulations, signal processing, and many linear algebra operations such as ML divide and a number of iterative solvers. And this list continues to grow with every release to cover a broad range of application area. With these overloaded functions, you can interact with these arrays the same way you would with any MATLAB array and manipulate data available remotely on MATLAB workers without low-level MPI programming. Distributed arrays also have support for partitioning both dense and sparse arrays, further optimizing the total memory occupied. Typical use cases for sparse distributed arrays are found in applications like seismic data analysis, oil well data analysis in the oil and gas industry, and many others. Starting our 2016B, there's also additional support for creating distributed tables, distributed daytime arrays, distributed strings, and so on. Now let's put some of this information together and walk through a simple workflow of how you would use these distributed arrays. What we want to do is to use distributed arrays to solve a system of linear equations, ax equal to b, using an iterative solver. To do this, we'll begin by opening a pool of eight MATLAB workers on the cluster. Where your MATLAB workers are located, whether on your desktop or on the cluster, is controlled by the profile selected in the parallel drop-down menu. Even if you don't have a pool of MATLAB workers open, the distributed function will automatically do that for you. We'll first create the system matrix A and the solution vector B as distributed arrays using the overloaded matrix creation functions. By using a fairly small size of data for demonstration purposes only, but you can either scale this up to a much larger matrix or load data from existing files depending on the combined cluster memory available to you. You can also see how both the data in A and B is distributed across the workers. 
as you can see here, the columns of matrix A are split across the eight workers, also denoted by different lab numbers. Similarly, for vector B, the rows are distributed across the workers. Since we know that A is an identity matrix, we can further convert it to a sparse matrix using the standard MATLAB function sparse. And finally, solve the system of equations using the iterative solver CGS. As you can see, after the initial step of creating the distributed arrays, the rest of the MATLAB code you write is exactly the same as you would for any regular MATLAB array. This allows you to seamlessly scale the size of your problem with minimal changes to your existing workflows. You can find additional information, examples, and benchmarks for distributed arrays in the documentation for the Parallel Computing Toolbox.